So you've always wanted to own and run and, and have a comic store of your very own. You've seen The Big Bang Theory. It's exciting to you. <laughs> Sorry. No, I can't even say it with a straight face. Um, you want to own a comic shop. What should you know? What should you learn? Is it even a good idea to do something like that? Uh, we'll, we're going to talk about that. Hey, this is Perch, and for the three of you who are still listening, I feel like if I say Big Bang Theory, it just is going to uh, wipe out 90% of my audience. I'm just going to nope and stop listening right there. I, uh, maybe not. I just I hate that show. I I don't know. <laughs> I just find it. And it's on planes. Like, I, I mean, you could tell I've been on a lot of planes if, uh, you know, I've exhausted all the movie opportunities and I'm now down to just shows. And it's like the Big Bang Theory is all that's left. It's like, ugh. And I'm, I'm clicking on that, and I'm like, ah, I'd rather just stare at the blank part of the seat in front of me. Anyway, so you want to run a comic shop. For a lot of people, this is a dream. They, they've just, they've always wanted to have comic shops of their own. They love comics. They want to run it. They want to manage it. And is this something they should do? What should they know? Is it a good idea? Um, so uh, let me give you some advice on this. I, from my perspective, I've run a comic shop, owned it, uh, financed it, been in the front lines, been behind the scenes. I uh, lived in a different state from the comic shop I owned and was paying other people to do it and how well that works, uh, not most of the time. But since since about 1990, so we're talking, we're now into 30 years. Um, that's a long time. I think I'll have my 30-year anniversary here in April, I believe, of, of, of being involved in comics in some capacity. I've taken some big breaks, uh, certainly from running a shop, and it's always interesting you come back and uh, when I say big breaks, like never more than a couple of years, but just, you know, having, having been away from it for some amount of time, you come back and you're like, Oh Christ, you know, this is different and diamonds not different. Damn it. Um, it just, just a couple uh, little elements like that. Um, first off, if you're going to run a comic shop, I think you have to ask yourself, why, why do you want to do this? Is it because you love comics? Well, if that's your sole primary and only reason, then running a comic shop's probably not a good idea for you. A better idea would be to own a comic museum or, you know, collect comic art and have a gallery or, you know, there's a lot of other ways to get involved in comics and to have that kind of be in your life than running a comic shop. Because a comic shop is a lot more about being a business than being a collector. So I, I, I've known a lot of people who got into comic shops, they buy a shop a shop up here in Seattle like changed hands four times and it was from primarily people who always run to go on a comic shop and just kept bouncing back and forth because you quickly discover that the majority of your day is going to be filled up with non-comic related things you know where's your comics how do you where's the taxes what do I got to pay uh hell you know what happened it, it just it quickly goes sideways and you can kind of tell comic shops where the owner or the people running it have a deep love for comics and not a deep love for running a business. These are the people who typically you know, kind of sit behind the counter. They look a little bit salty. They're reading a comic. Maybe they're setting up game night or something like that. And they just kind of don't understand how they got there. You, you can kind of see that dissatisfaction in their face of like, what, what happened here? I had a nice life and now I'm running a comic shop. Uh, you, you need to be business oriented. And for this, I think I use this advice for people in all different fields and I, I you know, including technology and, and you know, I've, I've mentored some people coming out of college and, and I get, you know, I say, you got to learn to trust your gut and you have to learn whether your gut can be trusted. So those are two different things and they, they actually need to go in the opposite order from how I said it. Uh, first, do you have good instincts? Do you have good, a good gut? Uh, you're at the end of the day, if you're running a business or really anything in your life, you hopefully have surrounded yourself with good friends, people who can give you advice people who will support you when you fall, people who will help carry the burden for you. Lots of reasons why you want a good network, good friends, good good people around you. You should definitely try and curate and cultivate that in your life. But at the end of the day, your your internal barometer, your internal gut is what's going to be, you know, what tells you if you should do something or not. And I, I remember I talked to a guy about, oh, about a year ago and he was doing consulting and he said, you know, hey, I, I, you know, I, I know a lot about the space. I know the industry. I know things that I'm doing. 
I am liked, you know, I have a good personality, people like to bring in, but at the same time, I, you know, I, I make bad hiring decisions, I bring in people that, that are not trustworthy or that flame out earlier, I, I tend to want to believe the best in everyone, so I give people like 8th, ninth, 80th chances when they clearly don't deserve it, and the, the business suffers as a result, um, I tend to kind of over-exaggerate what I'm capable of and under- estimate the amount of work it's going to take and just just kind of you know I've got these very self-aware and it's like should I run a business should I actually go out and and start a company of my own and my answer was no you probably shouldn't you're best served in a company where you've got a good framework around you where you can have somebody in charge who's not you who can make kind of the tougher decisions and set that framework in motion and you should you know Instead, kind of focus your skills on where you can add maximum damage or, or you know, maximum value, not damage. And, and I think the same thing comes true for comics. If you're going to run a shop, you have to ask yourself, do you have, a, do you have good, good gut instincts? Is your, are, is your business sense pretty on the money? Do you pay your bills on time? Do you forget things? Do you, how, you know, how are your people skills? Do you, make, you know, do you make good friends or do you have abusive, you have a tracker of good abusive friends or, or things that are, you know, that are challenging? Are you good at having lots of balls up in the air at once because running a business, any kind of business, you're going to have to spin a lot of plates simultaneously. You're going to have to worry about stock. You're going to have to worry about future growth. You have to worry about paying current bills. You're going to have to worry about employees that you have in the door. These are a lot of different priorities that pull you in lots of different directions. So how comfortable are you with multitasking? That's going to be something that's going to be important for you. Um, how It goes back to your gut. How good are you predicting? A lot of comics, you know, direct comics shop sales are you're predicting how well comics are going to move inside your shop. And so that ability to predict effectively and that ability to read the data you have about what sells in your location, in your store is a big deal. You know, you, you got to be able to to make good decisions. You got to be able to make good bets that are going to pay off most of the time. Nobody is 100%. Nobody is going to be able to successfully predict things 100% of the time. If they did, you know, don't go into comics, go into the market, you know, the stock market, and just make yourself a billionaire. But generally speaking, you need to be able to uh, take data, find data where it doesn't exist. So, for example, if Marvel's going to publish uh, Empire here, this sci-fi story, you've got to kind of say, okay, how well will this do in my shop? What are all the different factors that go into how I should order this? How many pre-orders? Have I heard anything in the shop about this? How does science fiction typically do in my shop? How do Marvel crossovers do in my shop? How does this writer artist team perform? Uh, are, is there you know, something controversial, some intangible element to this series that might raise the value of the, of the comic? These are all questions that you should be able to either answer with you know, firm data or be able to make good predictions on. And that's going to be critical to your success as a business owner. That's going to be what you're, you're going to need to do. And so I think that when you get into comics, if you're going to run a shop, you, know, you, you almost have to put that kind of love and that spirit of comics almost to the side for a moment. And you're going to have to build up your base business fundamentals. You're going to have to have a lot of good thought about your shop location, the people you're going to hire, what you're going to stock, how much money you're going to float here or there. Are you going to be more focused on back issues or new issues? Are you going to have games? Are you going to have merchandise? Are you going to start to um, split up your revenue between comics and games and all these other different things that you could sell in your shop? What's the DNA of your shop need to be and how effective are you at you know, analyzing and assessing that DNA of, of making good decisions? How, how good are you at doing that? All of this is what goes into making a comic. And so if none of that sounds fun, if everything I just said sounds like a huge chore, the stuff you want to get away with or get away from, then don't open a shop. It's not for you. Uh, you. You should be able to feel comfortable with everything I just said. You should, in some cases, either be thrilled by it or see it as a challenge or or say, yeah, I, I think I know what to do. I think I'm excited about that kind of opportunity. And then bring your love of comics, your, your passion for the industry, then bring that back to the table and use the two together to create the epic shop that you've always wanted. But if you only have the second, you are going to fail. It will not work because beyond everything I just said, you know, it's a brutal time for comics. They cost a lot of money. 
The fans aren't, you know, running through the door like they used to. We do not have a boom of comics. And by all accounts, none of the publishers are steering us toward that. Retail in general is extremely hard. The idea of having a product that you have to stock every single week and kind of hope that it sells and juggle that floor space and, and all the rest makes it tough. And, you know, the unspoken thing about comics, a lot of the people who want to be your employees, who want to work in a comic shop, not necessarily own it, tend to be flakes. And, and I, it pains me to say that, but it's true. A lot of people who, who really want that job, they kind of want the, the fun job that they saw on Mall Rats, or they, they, they want a jokey job. They want a job that's going to be kind of low energy, that's going to allow them to kind of talk about, you know, who's the better kisser? Is it Gambit or is it Rogue? And they, they don't necessarily think about the business side of things, which just means it's going to fall on your shoulders. You are the owner. So you're going to have to worry about it. And if, if that's not for you, avoid it. Then, then don't. Anyway, it's a tough decision. And getting into any business is a tough decision. And, and you, know, again, you have to have a hard look at yourself in the mirror. Are you a leader? Are you an owner? Or are you a, a follower, a doer? There's no shame in not being a leader. A lot of there's you know millions, billions of people on the planet, and not all of them are leaders. In fact, the majority are not leaders. And odds are, of the people listening to this right now, if I get the typical 100 to 150 views, then you know, 50 of those people are leaders. 100 people are not. So which one are you? And it's it's again, no offense if it's not you. It just means you know who you are. You know what you're capable of. And you can be a superstar in a company with an effective leader. You can absolutely be that, that great person, that, that person who creates magic. You don't have to be a leader to create magic. And the worst case are people who are pretending to be leaders who are not. That just it's, it's, it, You're wasting your own time. So those are my thoughts. What questions do you have? Leave me a comment below. I'll try and answer them as best I can. Are you thinking about getting into a comic shop? Um, why? What, what excites you about it? What do you want to do with it? Let's talk about that in the comments below. As I said, uh, give me a like or subscribe if you enjoyed the content here. You want to hear more of it. Always appreciate that very, very much. Follow me on Twitter at Comic Perch. And thanks for listening.